Charlotte Katakuri debuted on OPTC Global on the 25th of May 2019. Being the celebratory New Year's banner for the Japan version of the game, global players were excited to pull on this upcoming Sugo Fest with increased rates for powerful characters. Alongside the introduction of some more Charlotte family members, the super evolution for Quick Gear 4 Luffy was guaranteed after only 6 10 plus 1 pulls on the banner, making it one of the highest valued banners up until this point. The other characters debuting in this batch included Big Mom Pirate's Head Chef, Gourmet Knight Strusen, Minister of Cheese and 19th Son of the Charlotte Family, Charlotte Mondor, as well as President of the Katakuri Fan Club and the Kamikaze Captain, Charlotte Flampe. And the Sugo Fest exclusive character of the batch brought along one of the highest attack multipliers the game had seen with a captain ability up until this point, along with a powerful healing effect that hadn't been seen thus far. Abusing the healing effect of his captain effect and as well as tanking hits it amplifies the damage increase of his special allowing most bosses to be defeated with his special ability alone introducing charlotte katakuri a man's battle in this series we'll be traveling back in time to experience some of the older sugo fest exclusive characters in their prime aiming to show just what it was like to use these characters on their debut I hope you enjoy the video, and without further ado, let's enter the Legends of OPTC. So thank you very much for checking out yet another episode of the Legends of OPTC, and we have a massive video today covering one of my favorite legends in the game, alongside one of the best super evolutions that's released in the game's history as well, as we have V2 Katakuri alongside Snake Man. A lot of people would probably say just make a dedicated video for Snake Man, but we're not going to be doing that, not in this video anyway. But Snake Man is a massive addition to the game. During this Sugo Fest, I believe you had to do six or nine multis. I can't remember off the top of my head. But you got Snake Man given to you for free after the sixth multi or the ninth multi. I can't remember which one it was. Which is absurd, as at this point in time, Quick Gear 4 Luffy was still widely considered to be one of the best legends in the game, and you could get him guaranteed by doing a handful of multis, which is just, just absurd. Uh, they, they don't really do stuff like that anymore, which is kind of crazy to see, but having a character as powerful as this at the time guaranteed on the Sugo Fest, it, it was by far and away the best way to spend your Rainbow Gems in One Piece Treasure Cruise. Snake Man is a completely different character to what Quick Gear 4 Luffy was. Not having the gear gauge mechanic, now he's just a straight up, you know, base captain, cooldown reduction, rainbow captain. After you use his special, he gets a buffed special, a buffed uh, multiplier, matching slots, HP boost, and then a special that gave you multiple turns of an orb boosting effect, uh, multiple uh, turns of a chain boost as well. If he's your captain, he makes all colored slots beneficial, just... Lots of really good stuff here, and the fact that he's fighter and powerhouse gives him good synergy with the new Sugo Fest exclusive, which we'll talk about in just a moment. We do have all of the rare recruits to talk about first. The first one being Strusen, which is a very good rare recruit, by the way. Strength slasher driven, captain ability sucks, but you have a sailor ability, making size slots beneficial to himself, and changes all slots into recovery at the start of the fight this was a very powerful mechanic and if you're using characters that are in focused around the recovery slots or characters that like to heal then strusen is a great ad addition and great asset to your crew and a very good special too removing poison completely removing bind and despair by five turns changes tandem block and bomb slots and badly matching slots into recovery and then it makes strength sigh and recovery slots beneficial for the crew for three turns I mean, you don't need to be an Einstein to, to discover that this is a very good special. Five turn debuff removal, very, very key. I mean, poison removal is always niche to have, but then the orb change, just a great addition to this character in almost every way. This is a fantastic rev recruit that definitely still sees some niche usages today and is not a bad unit at all. Mont Dor was also a very powerful rev recruit on release. Strength shooter driven, captain ability doesn't really matter. Reducing special bind on himself by three turns, which is interesting. And if you have a strength or a psi captain, then he makes quick slots beneficial to strength and psi characters. So that's also a pretty cool effect. 
though it has a really odd condition. And then the special ability removing Rainbow Shield and Blue Shield by 4 turns, also removing increased damage taken, burn, and special bind by 4 turns. So it is odd that he removes 4 turns of special bind, but he only resists 3 of it. Of course, if they upped the numbers to 5 turn removal on the Sailor effect, and 5 turn debuff removal for all of these, this is hands down one of the best rev recruits in the game's history. Unfortunately, they kind of missed the mark a little bit. And then if you have a Strength or a Psy Captain, then he gives you a 1.75 Color Affinity Boost to Strength and Psy for two turns. See, so yeah, as we said, you know, if they upped the numbers just a little bit on his crewmate ability and the special ability, we, we have one of the best recruits in the game's history. Unfortunately, not the case, but Montor, still on release, was very good. And then we have everyone's favorite member of the Charlotte family, Charlotte Flampe, uh, who is a Psy shooter-driven, and her Captain ability doesn't matter, and her special ability... A little weird, recovering six times her recovery at the end of the turn for the next three turns upon launching. Then it says, if during the turn you launch the special, you hit three perfects, then you will boost the attack of fighter slasher shooter driven and powerhouse by 1.75 for three turns in the next turn. So you don't get the attack boost on the turn you activate the special, you only get it after you activate the special, which is just really, really odd. Um, and then it also says that if you launch the special with 50% or more health remaining, then you protect yourself from defeat for one turn. This kind of effect isn't always useful, but there are definitely cases where this effect is going to be really, really nice, and we may be showcasing that into in today's video as well. The fact that you can protect yourself from defeat works very, very well with what V2 Katakuri tries to do. So I guess now that we've talked about that, we can go ahead and move on to Charlotte Katakuri himself, Mr. Slam Jam V2 being a Psy Fighter Powerhouse, and his Captain ability will boost the attack of Fighter Slasher Shooter Driven and Powerhouse by 1.825, and that does stack with both classes. So the way that it works is, is, yes, this multiplier is really bad, but if you have a character that has two of these five classes, then it multiplies the 1.825 into itself, which equates to a 3.3 times bonus, um, in, in, in just in terms of the total, which at face value isn't a lot, but it does continue, um, and then it will also go ahead and boost the color affinity of the same classes by 1.4 times. So this is where things get a little funky, because if you have, you know, for example, a character that has that 3.3 times multiplier, if you are attacking with type advantage, they get a 1.4 color affinity boost. Which means that if you have a character that attacks with type advantage, they actually have a 4.6, almost a 4.7 times multiplier. Which at this point in the game is the highest multiplier given to any captain in the game at this point in time. But of course, there is the drawback of you have to hit with type advantage. So if you do plan your team out correctly and you do have the type advantage, this is the best damaging captain you can possibly run. But of course, there are conditions in terms of the classes that you can use on your team to actually receive those benefits. And it also does work in reverse. So if you're attacking with type disadvantage, the 1.4 is like divided by the 3.3. So you end up with like a two times multiplier or something. So it's really, really bad. But if you do plan it correctly, it does absurd amounts of damage. Furthermore, you recover 50% of the damage that you've taken from enemies in the previous stage whenever you move into the next stage. And this does work with double Katakuri, so if you have two Katakuri Captains, you heal 100% of the damage that you received during that stage when you move into a new stage. So let's say a mob does 5,000 damage to the team, his Captain ability will heal 2,500 when you move into the next stage, double Katakuri heals 5,000. You can see how this kind of stacks up together. And uh, also, all of these slots counted as beneficial to the crew as well. Strength, Psy, Recovery, and Tandem. Just lots of slots, lots of damage, uh, and also healing mechanics. So a very interesting, interesting Captain. The special ability takes full advantage of the Captain, where you heal 50% of the damage that you have taken. That's very important, because you want to be taking as much damage as possible. With his special ability that deals 30 times the amount of damage taken from enemies before you launch the special and typeless damage to all enemies. So, if you take a lot of damage, his special does a lot of damage. And then furthermore, 15 times damage taken from enemies before the special is launched is added as additional typeless damage for one turn. This is brand new tap timing bonus damage. So, it does equate it here where the amount of damage the special can launch will max out at 6 million damage. So when you swipe up and you do damage, 6 million damage. And the tap timing bonus damage will cap out at 3 million damage, which means with 6 characters attacking with 3 million damage each, it will add 18 million total damage 
to the crew if you have fully charged the special. It caps out at taking 200,000 damage, which is very difficult to do. Taking 200,000 is a very difficult feat, but if you do do that, you get a lot of benefits for it. Even if you take 100,000 damage, you do 3 million damage, 1.5 million per tap, 9 million total damage, it can stack up pretty well. And the numbers that we're throwing around here seem pretty low, that's because we're looking at it through the lens of 2023. Back in 2019, when it came out this was an incredibly powerful special if you're able to get it to launch most enemies didn't have over you know 15 20 million some maybe got to 30 million and that was about it so you if you can stack up this on top of whatever else you're boosting it makes it very easy to clear bosses but of course the issue is you have to stall a lot in order to get the most out of this special which is why this character fell out of favor with a lot of people in the community so that's the rundown of v2 katakuri and his brand new sugo fest batch so without further ado guys let's go ahead and run it in today's video against some content we're in game now with my man mr slam jam katakuri member of the big mom pirates and one of the sweet three generals he can puff up his arms like mochi and explode them to launch punches he acknowledged luffy as a powerful enemy and called his battle with him a man's battle he fought one-on-one -on -one with luffy with all of his strength and of course this is a pretty big celebration during the time this was the new year sugo fest of japan moving from 2018 into 2019 it was a pretty big event and the fact at this point that Snake Man had never been revealed in the anime thus far, I believe the episode came out in late January, uh, past the New Year point. So Snake Man technically was like teased and shown off in One Piece Treasure Cruise before it was actually shown off in the anime, which is just wild to think about. But V2 Katakuri, we got him ready to go. He has the candy, he has the limit break. I'm really excited to show you guys what he is capable of doing in this video today so without further ado let's jump into the content so we're going to go ahead and showcase against the Colosseum versus Pika, which on release was pretty difficult. The boss has, I think, around 20 million HP, which when we look at it today, seems kind of a joke. But back then, 20 million was a lot of HP to deal with. But V2 Katakuri has really interesting ways in order to get around that with his special ability. As for the characters here, we've got Snake Man, who the main reason why Snake Man's on the team is because he's basically a strength beat stick that has... Um, the slot bind resistance. Flampe is very useful for this team as well as uh, Pudding. Um, and then we've also got Dracul Mihawk V1 and there is a very key reason why we have him. He actually works very well with Katakuri despite the fact that Mihawk doesn't receive the biggest buffs from Katakuri uh, in terms of the captain ability buffs but the special ability has great synergy with Katakuri that we're going to be showing off in today's video. So without further ado, let's jump into the content so of course the main thing that we have to do with katakuri v2 unfortunately we do have to do quite a lot of stall which is what we are going to be doing we actually want to tank quite a lot of damage from these mob characters here but we also got to make sure that we don't die um and you do notice here as well is that we are using the moby dick ship um that's actually very very key for this team because it enables us to get a higher hp pool it increases our maximum health by 1.4 which is pretty significant but in turn, it will actually go ahead and start us off at 50% HP, which is, is pretty bad on stage one. But the stages following this are going to be much, much better as we do have a lot of HP to play with. So we're just going to go ahead and kill off these mob characters here and we can get quite a lot of stall off on these turtles. And the good thing about it is, is because they attack every three turns, we can get, you know, 3000 healing before they do damage to us. Um, this turtle is going to do a lot of damage here, actually. We actually might have to move on a little bit faster than I was hoping to do, but we have we have actually tanked quite a lot of damage here. We're going to start targeting this guy. We will have to kill this turtle in the following turn, unfortunately. But, you know, it is what it is. Unfortunately, we didn't really get a recovery slot, which would have helped us out a lot. Okay, we can stall a turn here, take another hit from this turtle, and then we can move on to the next stage. Now, remember with Katakuri's captain ability... 50% of the damage that is dealt to us, we heal back in the next stage. With double Katakuri Captains, we heal back all of the damage that we took during this turn. You can see in the top corner there, 25,000 is how much we are going to heal when we move on to the next stage. We'll just go ahead and uh, kill this turtle, heal back the 25,000, 26,000 with auto healing, of course. All right, so we're cooking with gas right now. We're looking pretty good. We are going to kill the mobs at the back. If we do let them attack us, they, they will despair us, so we don't want to deal with that. 
So all these guys at the front are going to do a pretty good amount of damage to us. Our cooldowns are looking pretty good. 13,000 damage inflicted. Let's go ahead and just attack with Luffy there. And Katakuri also gives us a really high chance at landing matching slots as well, which is a really good thing. Um, but in this case here, it does kind of suck for us because uh, we don't really have uh, ways to kind of stall on these mobs to tank more hits, which would have been nice to do, but it is what it is. This guy's going to hit us again, and then we will have to move on in this next turn here, unfortunately. So, we haven't really gotten a lot of damage inflicted to us to fully charge Katakuri special. What well, stage one we got 25,000, stage two it was 18,000. So we're not really, you know, stacking a lot of damage quite yet. You can see the accumulated damage is only 43,800. Um, the maximum capacity that V2 Katakuri can get up to is 200,000. So we don't, I don't really think we're going to be reaching 200,000. I don't think we need to either. So. We're on this stage here with Buffalo, and this is why I was mentioning earlier why I wanted a character that is a strength unit that also has slot removal or slot bind removal, because we can go ahead and actually do really good damage on this turn here versus Buffalo. Beautiful. And we do want to move on after the third turn, and the reason for that is because Buffalo will actually do really bad things. Uh, I can't remember exactly what he does off the top of my head, but I know it's it's nasty stuff. So, we're going to go ahead and take two hits. The third turn where he would do bad stuff, we're going to go ahead and move on. And we add another 15,000 to the damage that we have taken so far, which is really, really good. Bing bong. And that'll get us pretty close to max HP. Yep, there we go. We're at max HP. Beautiful. Now we have this guy, uh, Gladius. So Gladius is pretty annoying. Special bind, and he also inflicts resilience too. We have the pudding here. So pudding will remove the special bind on the crew, but it also gets around the enemy resilience. And pudding is nice because she's actually double boosted by Katakuri's captain. So that's perfect. And normally, we can actually just go ahead and kill here. However, I do want to tank a little bit more damage just to make sure that Katakuri is doing more damage when we move on to the last stage. So we're going to take a couple of hits here. Don't want to take too much, though. Um, I feel like we might actually have to move on here because we don't have a... So we, we're going to be using Flampe because when we kill this guy, he does like 50,000 damage to our crew. So by using Flampe, we can actually tank the hit. But unfortunately, I don't think that's going to be good enough because we have to use her special when we're above 50% HP. So we're in a little bit of a weird spot right now. Um, I think we do have to just move on here, to be honest. Um, we might have to do that, I think. So I think what we'll do is we will go ahead and use the Flampe special here. And we are going to move on. So hopefully we've stacked up enough damage. It might, we, we might have to run this back, I think. I don't think we're going to win. We need to actually find a way to stack more damage on our crew. So we might have to go back to the drawing board here. Uh, we will use the friend captain category special because our friend captain is going to be special binded when we move into the final stage. So burning mochi. Really cool animation here. And that will do a lot of damage to this guy. And then we can just do normal attack, should be able to get the dub, no problems. And then we have Gladius, who is going to go ahead and inflate and explode, doing 50,000 damage. Flampe will tank the hit for us. And then all of that damage is now stacked once again onto our Katakuri. So, boss stage, we have arrived. And the thing about this as well is that on the last stage, there's no normal attacks only. But there is an interrupt if you do a health cutting special. So you don't want to use a health cut at all against this guy. Now we are despaired, so we don't essentially get any captain boost whatsoever here. The good thing is though, is that because of Katakuri's damage with his special, it actually doesn't matter. Another thing as well is we get another 50% health cut when we, um, when we enter the stage. So that's actually really cool that we get that too. Alright, so from here, we're going to go ahead and use that Katakuri special, which we've stacked over 100,000 damage now, so that is going to do a lot of damage to him. It's going to be pretty close, though, so let's see how much damage we can actually do with uh, 117,000 damage stacked. So 3.5 million there. We will go ahead and use the Luffy special, because, I mean, why not, right? <laughs> we might as well use his special ability. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I probably shouldn't have used his special, because my Snake Man is level limit break 5, so technically we get, like, the buffed version of his special. I don't think it's going to matter in the long run, um, but I guess we'll see what happens here, because we are despaired, so we don't really get a lot of damage output anyway. And ideally, 
We hit all our perfects, and then we should be good to go, and hopefully we'll kill him off with Mihawk. That's the plan. All right, let's see it. Okay. And then we get slapped by Pika there. And then Pika is going to go ahead and haste, which is fine. And then the Mihawk special should give us enough damage for the kill. Okay, Night Gleam. Should be enough. Beautiful, let's go, dude. Man, I really want to see a level limit break buff for V1 Mihawk. He's the oldest legend that doesn't have level limit break yet, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for big things for that Mihawk. But yeah, the really cool thing about that synergy with Katakuri and Mihawk is that the tap timing bonus damage counts as your normal attack damage, which means that, you know, Katakuri special giving you so much additional damage will add to Mihawk's damage with his special. So good synergy between Mihawk and Katakuri there in order for us to get the kill over two turns against a very, very tanky enemy. And that's going to wrap it up with my man, Mr. Slam Jam Katakuri. Moving forward, though, into next week's episode, we're going to be covering a brand new dual unit being uh, Neko Mamashi and Inuarashi, which is an interesting character. Um, I don't know if I would say a fan favorite, but I know a lot of people were excited for that character when he first came out. But uh, definitely a troubling unit, that is for sure. But I I'm really, really pumped to have used this guy today in this episode. One of my favorite legends to release in the game's history. Such an awesome character. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video today. And if you guys did enjoy it, make sure to go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content that I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Other than that, guys, I will see you guys within the next video.